Hello, Solstice here, and I'm going to tell you about how the new daylight sensors work, particularly the nighttime sensor feature. As you can see, we are basically, this is um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 here. This is the mo furthest it goes. Just to prove that there's this right here, showing that it doesn't really reach any further than 15, like typical redstone powering. That's its max. It's basically noon, which is the which is when it's basically brightest in the game. And this is basically yeah, it's a daylight sensor. The less general daylight it gets, the d less power it gives off. What about the nighttime sensor, though? So, as you can see, at noon, it is basically giving off no signal whatsoever. And of course, none of us is going to reach this far in the first place. But for more proof of ideal concepts, it's sort of there. Okay, but when I put a single block here, it get, turns down a single light value, which brings this one, this single bit of redstone, powered. Like, this isn't powered, but this is. And if I go to 15, which is the maximum of its power, and it's basically the amount of actual light levels there are, that's pretty much its full powering. And that would basically have to be 15 blocks away from a daylight source of light. Thing. Uh, you can ignore that. That has nothing to do with this. I was just sort of playing around with some stuff. Um, now here's something else. It's not as much detecting nighttime sky as much as it's detecting absence of daylight. Like, um... <clears throat> you can have this in total pitch black without anything around it, and it will basically take that as a means to power. This is, um... 13 blocks away from the, the outside where the main source of daylight is, so it is giving 13 redstone signal out instead of 15 or 14. I basically put this to the test and I figured it would make a nice bit of decoration bits and like indoors as well as providing lighting compared to this yellower design for the daylight sensor. And you wouldn't need actual daylight to keep this going, either. Like, unlike a daylight sensor, as it can be in the middle of the most deepest, darkest cave ever, and it'll work perfectly. It, you don't need to see the nighttime sky or anything. That's basically what I put to the test. Those are pretty much my findings of this. Oh no, I really do like this idea. And this color I feel would be pretty nice to be used as floor paneling and a hidden source of lighting at the same time. And um, something else worth mentioning is this will still get some power in here because it's still receiving some means of daylight remnants. If you're ever curious more on your how much daylight you're actually getting, um, let's see. I haven't really. Aha. So, hmm. Hold on. But anyways, right where it says light. Where it says light, 
Um, Skylight is basically what has the most in effect in all this. The more Skylight there is, the more this will be powered. The less Skylight there is, the more this will be powered. And block light is pretty much its own sort of thing, really. It's just the amount of light in the area. And as we all as most of us know, the black light affects when mobs spawn, which is seven. I believe it's seven. It could be eight, but I believe it's seven. Because seven is a below half. <clears throat> when it's down to seven, yeah. So that's pretty much all I have to talk about out of this, of my findings of this study. I hope you all learned a little something and maybe even been inspired to try a few things for yourself rather than um, waiting more for other people to come up with something. I hope this brings some inspiration to uh, do redstone wise as well as decoratively. I know this is a little plain with just andesite, polished andesite, but yeah, whatever. It wasn't really meant to look fancy, it was just meant for demonstration. Uh, my name is Solstice, hope you all learned something and have a great day. Bye-bye.